Hello everyone. In the last class, if you remember, we have solved examples of valence bond theory. Okay. But that examples was for tetrahedral complexes that were paramagnetic and diamagnetic in nature. Okay. One of them was a weak field ligand. The other one was strong field ligand. Today we will do the similar pattern, but for octahedral complexes. Okay. So let's get started. Let's start solving this complex. First, find out the oxidation number of cobalt. Ammonia is a neutral ligand. So for a neutral ligand, the overall charge will be the charge of your metal. So cobalt charge will be plus three. Okay. Next thing, ammonia is a strong field ligand, right? Then write down the orbitals of cobalt. So the orbitals of cobalt are 3d7. Okay. Then you have 4s2 and then you have 4p0. Okay. But we don't want for cobalt. We want the orbitals for cobalt plus 3. So do it straight away. So for cobalt plus 3, start removing electrons okay, from the outer orbital. So two electrons from S, so that becomes 4S0 and one electron from D and that becomes 3D6. Okay, draw the orbitals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, now decide how many ligands you have and how many orbitals you need, okay? But before that, we know that it is a strong field ligand, so ask a question to yourself, whether spin pairing will occur or not, okay? So in this case, we know because it is a strong field ligand and you have unpaired electrons, okay? You will have spin pairing, okay? So now, carry on something called as, since strong field ligand present, okay? Therefore, spin pairing. And after spin pairing, the orbitals of nickel of cobalt will look like this. Sorry. So orbital of cobalt plus three. So this will look like after spin pairing, it will look like push the electrons. Okay. So now you have one, two, three, four. Okay. So all four of them will be paired up. So this was already paired. If this goes here, this is paired. If this goes here, this is paired. Okay. So you have total six electron pair it to give this. Okay. So these two orbitals are empty. Your S orbital was already empty and the P orbital was already empty. So what you have right now is 3D6. Okay. Then 4S0 and 4P0. Okay. See. You have six ammonia, so you have six pair of electrons coming in to form a coordinate bond. So you need six empty orbitals. Do we have that? Have a look, count it. So you have two from D orbital, one from S, and you have three from P. So all of them will mix, okay, to undergo hybridization, and that will look like, okay. So now hybridized CONH36 plus three how will this look like okay so just remove this bit so because that is going to be unhybridized so this is your 3d6 unhybridized okay but all others have hybridized so one two three four five six so one two three four five six okay so you have six i repeat you have six now which orbitals you have mixed you have mixed two d 1 s and 3 p so that is your hybridization so you have 6 d 2 s p 3 orbitals of what of cobalt plus 3 okay fill the electrons with your ligands okay so that is one ammonia two three four five six six ammonia electrons forming a coordinate bond with the metal I hope this is very clear and you know if it is the DSP2 hybridization, okay, what is going to be the geometry of the complex? I repeat, what is going to be the geometry of the complex? It is going to be octahedral, okay. So again, answer all those questions that we have learned. That is, this complex has which hybridization? It has D2SP3 hybridization, okay. So if it has this hybridization, what is going to be the geometry? It is going to be octahedral. Okay, next. 
this is 3d okay the s is from 4s and p that you have used is 4p so if you notice the d that you have used here is n minus 1d because your n was equal to 4 okay so n take the n from s orbital so n was equal to 4 and here you are using 3d so you now know that it is going to be an inner orbital complex okay next you can see that there is no unpaired electron present therefore it is going to be a diamagnetic complex and it is going to be colorless is this clear i hope okay you are understanding what we are doing right now now i'm going to solve this complex but what you will do is you will try to solve it on your own okay do not copy before fine so let's start so here you can see that your cobalt is having an oxidation state of plus three now you can calculate that the ligand that you have is a weak field ligand okay the electronic configuration or the orbitals of cobalt okay plus three so cobalt again had d7 and s2 electrons similar like the first example that we have done okay so in this case let's down the write down the first one okay 3d7 4s2 and 4p0 okay remove three electrons for this so your s will be empty and d will lose one electron giving you 3d6 this is clear okay next draw the orbitals so one two three four five six electrons your s and your p now if you talk about fluorine now this is a weak field again so there's a problem here because it is a weak field again there is no spin pairing it means you cannot touch this this electron cannot pair with each other okay so there's a real big problem and what is the problem okay the thing is you have six six okay uh, ligands coming in so you need six empty orbitals so you have one two three and four only four empty orbitals so how will you do the hybridization we said that the number of coordinate bond or the coordination number should be equal to the number of hybridized orbitals so you need six orbitals so from where will you get the other two okay so we will use the one which is next to it that is after 4p you can use 4d also because it is also empty okay i repeat after p we will start using 4d because there is no scope of pairing of electrons in this case okay so directly let's start writing down the hybridized orbital so this orbital will mix okay i'll just mark them you will have mixing of 1s okay 3p orbitals and we will use only 2d orbitals okay we, because we need only six so that is one two three four five six okay next so after hybridization so hybridized cobalt f6 3 minus okay after hybridization how will you get your orbital diagram okay so you will have this d orbital which is as it is unhybridized okay and you will take this bit so 3d6 okay so i will okay let's draw it let's not be lazy okay then the hybridized orbitals that we have six of them okay so this is six take the orbital name s p3 and d2 so the hybridization is sp3 d2 if you remember the earlier example okay of cobalt that had hybridization d2 sp3 okay and that was an inner orbital complex okay here you can see this sp3 d2 and you can see your n is equal to 4 all of them have the same n it is not n minus 1 so this is an outer orbital complex example okay fine now the other this is also left okay that is your 4d0 which is now empty so now this is the empty orbital even if you don't write it's okay okay so this is one two three four five and six okay what will happen they will form coordinate bond with six f minus okay so six f minus has placed the pair of electrons in the empty orbitals of your metal okay so your hybridization is 6 sp3 or hybridization is sp3 d2 i repeat your hybridization is sp3 d2 
So the geometry of the complex will be octahedral. Because your orbital D that is used is ND, therefore it is outer orbital complex. Talk about the unpaired electrons. You have four unpaired electrons present. Okay, so since four unpaired electrons present, therefore paramagnetic and colored. Therefore, this complex is paramagnetic and it is colored in nature. Is this clear? I hope this was a very good example for you to solve for octahedral because we got inner orbital as well as outer orbital complex. So let's talk about the last application of VBT and that complex is very very important. This is cupra ammonium sulfate or cupro ammonium sulfate. Now again when you talk about this you can write it like this that is you can write out Cu NH3 4. The charge on sulfate okay sulfate is SO4 2 minus so when it is moving it will take two electrons so overall charge of the complex will be 2 plus okay. So now ammonia is a neutral ligand and it is a strong field ligand okay ammonia is neutral but it is a strong field ligand. The charge of copper will be the charge of the complex because ammonia is a neutral ligand so the overall charge of the complex will be plus 2 okay. Now this is very special example why because if you write down the configuration of electrons copper okay will have 3d9 okay 4s0 and 4 sorry 4s2 and 4p0 okay remove two electrons so what you get here is 4s0 okay so this is for copper plus 2 okay draw the orbitals okay next s orbital and the p orbital now if you see over here there's one unpaired electron present right and we said that ammonia is a very strong ligand so it will definitely do something the problem here is there's no electron present for pairing okay so the spin pairing is not going to take place but there's some unexpected thing that is happening over here and what is that the electron from this d orbital okay is pushed to the last p orbital so if you have this as px py and pz this electron is getting transmitted or it is jumping to pz 4pz orbital okay i repeat this electron is transmitted to 4pz orbital now why is this happening since your ammonia is strong field ligand therefore your d electron is moving to pz okay so let's show that so what you will have now is <coughs> you will have 4d orbital which is paired 1d orbital which is empty you have one s orbital which is empty and you have one p orbital with one electron okay in the last p orbital not even here so it is you know not even following your you can say hunts rule because we are not using this this is theoretically if you say but in general if you say all p orbitals are of same energy okay so for one electron that electron can go in px py or pz okay so just remember that theory can be different than your experiment sometimes so now where will the ammonia electrons go okay they will use this four orbital so this will undergo hybridization so you will be using 1d this is your 3D, this is your 4S, this is your 4P. Okay, so you will use 1D, 1S and 2P. So your hybridization will be DSP2. So your hybridized orbitals. <coughs> sorry. Of copper plus 2. Okay, that is in the complex. It will look like this is unhybridized D orbital with 8 electrons okay hybridized orbitals okay and again one unhybridized orbital that is 4pz okay so this is where your four ammonia will form a coordinate bond 
to give you 4 d s p 2 hybridization and remember that this is your 4 p z with one let on so it is 4 p z 1 okay this was a very different complex so try to keep it as your top priority okay next always remember the best thing can come at the end so don't leave this topic okay now let's talk about all other concept that is now we know that this complex okay has hybridization which is dsp2 so dsp2 hybridization will have a geometry which is square planar if it is a square planar geometry inner orbital and outer orbital you can talk over here because you have used a d orbital and you know that this is n minus 1 d why because your s is 4 s while your d is 4 minus 1 that is 3 d so this is an inner or vital complex next you have one unpaired electron present and therefore it is paramagnetic and colored in nature is this clear I, I hope you all know the color of cupramonium sulfate that is blue in color okay so this was all for today's lecture we have completed valence bond theory application see you soon in the next class thank you